Melbourne, so they took Caleb Windsor at seven, which is a bit of a surprise to me, and Colton Tholstrup at 13, but a uh, classy player. Yeah, no, the two players I think that um, were tied to the to the D's a little bit in in, a, in the lead up to the draft, and yeah, like you said, Windsor, uh, I probably I feel like there could have been a lot more said about the Demons overlooking Dan Curtin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think we heard from the D's after that they they were selecting the best available. So in, in their yeah. own list, they got the players who were at the top of their list. They're also it does it does work out as as a it was a balance of of getting the best player they that was available but at the same time filling some list needs which worked out quite well for them um so they'll, they'll be happy but yeah i i, th- I think they probably could have been more said about them not going for someone like dan Curtin, who um yeah would be a great fit for for the demons i think um i'll be honest that's who i was um hoping we'd pick up yeah, so yeah, seven, no, it but was, yeah interesting to see um not much was was made of that uh so but yeah wins are real classy uh, operator, wingman, and really quick. So one of the quicker kids in this draft. Um, you know, you look at him as probably a prospect that gets to learn off some some you know well trained wingman and Lockie Hunter, Ed Langdon, Angus Brayshaw. Um, some you know maybe a successor for Hunter down the track. You know, he also talked about you know he kind of looks at at his game um, and tries to compare it a lot to Ed Langdon. So that that'll probably work in in his favour a little bit. He's a pie supporter as well, so. Um, also, you know, works and looks at Josh Dacos as another one, and Colin Tholstrup, um, Just a, uh, he's going to be a fun player to watch, I think. Yeah, um, he's got but, a good vibe with that hair and the yeah. and the sunnies. Yeah, the vipers on at yeah. the combine. Um, real spark plug up front. You know, a um, bit like Cam Zerha. I think he gets compared to a fair bit. Um, it's just kind of a, a bullish, you know, player in the um, in front of center. So. Um, whether he played some senior footy this year and then he could get a look, I guess, um, early next year. But, you know, they're, they're fo- Melbourne's forward stocks are, are pretty solid. And then another one uh, they added through the rookie draft was father, son, Kynan Brown, um, who real consistent player. I, I don't know why he wasn't probably talked up a bit more. Like he was one of the best performers for Vic Metro. I think he won their best and fairest. Um, was absolutely solid with for the Oakley Chargers. Um, you know, he's probably a bit smaller size, but still a good contested player in midfield and could play some outside midfield as well. So I think he's gonna be a bargain. I like I father son anyway, so it wouldn't really matter if when he's when a bid came for him, um, unless, you know, the D's are having to cough up heaps of points. But I they'll be absolutely wrapped yeah. with 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 having adding him um, you know, through as a pre-listed player rather than as a national draft player. Obviously, they didn't pick up anyone after the first round anyway, so it's not like they had heaps of plans. But um, yeah, I think he's going to be a, a nice pickup for them yep. um, to add to their father son ranks. Yeah, and it was also just good to see them uh, resign Jake Malksham, uh in the rookie draft as well. Just yeah, to yeah. 